Hello there and welcome to Superboot, probably the world's largest synth event. We're here to check out the latest and greatest of synths and music tech and I'm also going to take you on a big tour of the entire event. It's really hard to know what Superboot is if you haven't been here. It's a music festival, it's like a community event, it's also a place where manufacturers showcase their gear, but the actual people who make the gear are here. You can ask them questions. And it's all located in this beautiful like park in the outskirts of Berlin. So we're gonna take a little tour later in the video. But first we're gonna check out Ike Multimedia who kindly sponsored my Superboot trip. <laughs> Talk a bit about the new precision monitors and uh, yeah, kind of what sets them apart from your previous monitors and kind of what, what's the, what's yes, the unique sure. thing with them? Everybody knows the, 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 the micro monitor, so the smallest monitor that we have. Then we moved to a package that was a little bit bigger, so like the MTM monitors, uh, which already had uh, calibrations inside, calibration inside and, uh, and some other nice touches. But then we went a step further and finally presented this, the first line of studio mo of, of big studio mo of big studio monitors that we have in three sizes uh, the five inches the six inches and the, and the MTM so if you were to say like the top three things about the new iLoud series of speakers what would that be like the top three things that you think make them stand out against all the competition one of my favorite is of course the uh, frequency extension and uh, and uh, linearity which is digital again digitally controlled but gives a very tight uh, low frequency which is something that you not find that that easily with the eye loud you get a very tight uh, a very tight low frequency which is super nice i mean as you know, I'm making electronic music myself, so I really need that, that, that fidelity. The second thing, again, I really like the possibility of changing the voicing of the, of the speakers with the software, because it gives you the possibility of not being stuck in your idea and then maybe forget where the music goes and you can check it and you can check out how it will actually translate. Yeah, how it will sound on different exactly, speakers. Exactly, how it will yeah. translate in, a, in, different, in different scenarios. The third thing is actually how small they are for how powerful and how low they go. Are there no new synths from Ike Multimedia this year or...? Uh, that's something coming. I'm gonna say that and yeah. Yeah, when? Uh, when? When can we expect it? During the summer uh, and most probably quite near from now. The synth might show up on your friendly neighborhood Bow Beats channel yeah, it in might. the future. It Maybe. Might. Yeah. It might. It might. Maybe with some Bow presets in there as well. Who it knows? Might. It might. It yeah. might. You know. <laughs> so when you actually arrive, if you're coming by the S-Bahn and you walk down this beautiful road here through the park, you get to see the Bungalow Dwarf, which is basically a bunch of small houses where there's synths and a lot of nerdy people in them. All right, so I'm here with George from Udo and they are showcasing this beast of a synthesizer. Since you've been demoing it all event, we thought we'd just do something a little bit different, you and I, like going from maybe a, a sawtooth and kind of building out a, a big yeah. sound on it, just to get an idea yeah, of yeah, what yeah. it sounds like and kind of what it can do. Yeah, 100%. I think that's a really good idea because you always, with instruments like this, you gravitate to like doing the Wah! swirly, loads of modulation stuff going on. But really, a synthesizer has just got a like, it's just got to sort of sound great with the most simplest basic waveforms. So what we'll do, um, it's basically set up like the last guy had it in random cases. You're here in manual mode, um, so... So that was however it was. We're going to go back to the init patch. And the init patch on a, on the same on a Super 6 is just pull everything into the down position. Yeah, simple enough. Everything, every control, every slider. Yes, looks like how my kids use my synths at home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll start this sound. We can add a little bit of expression with the poly aftertouch. I found that sort of everything roughly in the middle. Yeah, so, so here we're controlling the poly aftertouch, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, this one's bend, so let's give it a bit of bend as well. A little octave. Um, 
Yeah, and so then we can kind of go from there. If I, I can turn the binaural off, so now it's just straight down the middle, simple mono sawtooth. Um, and let's, let's just start arpeggiating or something. So and this is just a simple, not even any envelope. You're literally just listening to the sawtooth of the sound. Now let's engage the super waves. Now I should have the init patch on the second layer as well, but without even listening to its sounds. Yeah, so there's two layers to that? No, this is, this is just a single layer yeah. and I've turned this one down. Yeah. So I'm going to bring in the second layer. Yeah. Not even going to look, <laughs> look what it's doing. But hopefully we've got some sort of uh, string-like patch. Who's that? Oh, shit. Is that, is that some... I'm Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? You know what red We're means, filming. right? <laughs> it means bleeding out of... <laughs> Put that on your YouTube channel. How are things, Jeremy? Uh, they're good. I'm here. All right, so I'm here with Erica Sins, and they are showing off their new steam pipe synthesizer. Tell us a bit about what it is. Yeah, it's, so it's a polyphonic eight voice synth, but it takes a, I guess, drastically new approach uh, to the subject matter, being it is uh, a physical model uh, which simulates the way uh, any wind instrument works. So anything from a pipe organ to a piccolo flute. That's cool. Uh, Can we get a little sound? Just yes. so you hear what it sounds like? So the, the source of the sound is it's actually noise and think of it as air being blown into the pipe going into a delay box uh, with a, a number of parameters which effectively you know, feedback it into a sure. standing wave and, and as, as such, since it mimics the behavior and the sound it mimics overtones in exceptionally well okay. so you can sort of emulate some, some real instruments but with the twist being that you can, you know, go to real extremes of them. You can just like create a, you know, a flute that is, I don't know, three meters long if you wish, theoretically.
I'm Roman from uh, Kiviak Instruments. This is our first product named Wofi. It's the contraction with Lofi and Wi-Fi. So the Wofi is a new kind of instrument. It's like sample based synthesizer, looks like virtual analog, one button, one function, but we replace the oscillator with a sample player. In this sample player, uh, we can emulate vintage sampler, like old Japanese 12-bit sampler, 8-bit, and you can even do your own machine. And we added the texturer. The texturer is a granular shimmer. It's an FX, granular, that adds some grains and harmonic. This machine is also connected to the internet. So we have Wi-Fi embedded, and we develop a cloud platform. So the cloud platform will be totally free, for the community edition. And the goal of the cloud platform is to share your sample. So you can make your preset with your own sample and you can share it on the cloud platform. Very easy uh, to access and to share. And uh, we have also included an embedded microphone, an embedded speaker, and the full connectivity. So we have MIDI, audio in, audio out, CV gate in and out, the analog synchronization, MIDI over USB, and it can work on a battery. You don't have to plug the machine to work with it. Does it have like an internal battery? Yeah, or? there is an yeah. internal battery. Is a lithium ion or something? Yeah. yeah, and you can use it during four hours. And with the internal memory, you will have 18 minutes of uh, audio uh, recording and more than uh, 100 uh, slots uh, to, sample, uh, to uh, store your preset. On the cloud platform, it will be unlimited storage for free. Awesome. Can we hear some awesome sounds with sure. it? Sure. I can show you. Uh, very quick and easy uh, demonstration. So we have a rod, and I can add the texture. And we have also an embedded sequencer. And we can automate some parameters with the sequencer. So we choose the param. And for me, the killer feature is the embedded microphone, because it's really fun. You can do something with your voice. And I'm sorry. Wow. So now we're leaving the bungalow dwarf and we are heading down that way to the main area of Superbooth. And you can't go more than a hundred meters before you find another amazing <laughs> synth nerd. <laughs> and over to our left side, don't, don't, tell, shh, don't tell anyone, but over here, it's actually great food and not long queues. So you're gonna get a schnitzel. Yeah, they got some good stuff here, but this is, this is a secret. Don't share it with anyone. And after some more walking, we get to the main building and the main entrance. All right, so here is the main hall of the Superbooth area. From this area here, where you get your ticket and everything, your little armband, uh, you can either go, well, you could go outside. And if it gets uh, super hot, you can go in here, the swimming pool, look beautiful, lovely. Or you could walk into the, the labyrinth that is this area over here, a labyrinth of gear, or you could um, walk in that direction and go to the gym. Not that there's anything physical going on there, it's just a bunch of synths and stuff, but you could. So basically it's a sprawling thing. And if you go outside, there's uh, different tent areas. So overall it's just a massive, massive synth event with a lot of things going on. And we're gonna take a walk around and I'll show you. 
All right, so I'm here with Paul from PWM. Hey, Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Good to see you. Hello uh, out there. Yeah, and you have something new to show us, we right? We do. This is the PWM Mantis. It is our second synthesizer. Um, this one is a hybrid analog. Um, so it's digital oscillators with an analog signal path. This one, our first one, is pure analog. Controlled from here and then analog all the way. This one is a hybrid. So we go into the analog domain through here and then there's digital effects on the end. This is very special because this is the last synthesizer designed by myself and Chris Huggett, the late Chris Huggett. We were working together on this in the last year before he passed away and it's called Mantis, he called it Mantis, as a kind of follow on from the wasp if you like. So it's kind of, it's a duophonic, so it's a bit like two wasps and an Oscar filter, so it has the dual filter with width as well in the middle here so you can do width and width modulation on the filter and you can stack them up and do them in parallel and in series and you get that lovely thing where the peaks move in and out so it's um this is quite an uh, we, we have working firmware over there this is just being translated into the production unit so this is coming along if i'm being very honest with you it's a little early for super booth but we don't want to miss the opportunity to tell everyone about it of course so and we it. are dying to hear, hear <laughs> some some sounds from it so could you just Sure. Show us a little bit about the workflow and kind of what, what features there are and what it sounds sure. like. Sure, so we've got selectable wave types over here. Um, we have two oscillators and a sub. The sub follows the first oscillator. Then a Chris style mixer. So you kind of mix between the two oscillators with a balance there. So if you turn that one up so it's doing a different... It's screaming a bit at the moment, but that's okay. So you can kind of mix between the two there, bring in noise with the second one here. And then we have a ring modulator, on, which isn't currently working on this, but you can mix that in as well there. And then you've got tuning that. And then if you start adding a little bit of filter stuff going on there, you can hear that's, that's the filter in, um, in series. I can go just simple low pass 12. Is it the same uh, filter design as on the previous Malevolent or no. is it so a new, new a, design? This is a Salon key. Yeah. This one uses uh, multiple VCAs in a crisp configuration in order to build the filter in an Oscar style. So it ah, is that right, kind of... Right. I, I want to show you the peaks moving up and moving, moving apart if I can. So we can set up a moderate filter width, we'll modulate it with LFO and times it by full on. There you go. So there you can hear the... using the LFO to do that. And if you get to here... That's clipping a bit, but... You get that characteristic kind of sound which is rather nice. Uh, there'll be more to come on that. We'll do more audio demos as we, as we go. Um, it's, as I say, early for here, but um, it's to prove that it's here and it's yeah. real. And does it have an effect section as well? It or? does. So you've got a little bit of reverb coming in there, a nice low pass and high pass filter just to take the, the mud out of it. Mm -hmm. You should be able to hear there. So simple reverb and then a few chorus types as well, because it is stereo. You'll hear there's a bit of noise on there again, little things yeah. to iron out, little yeah. bugs to iron out, so don't worry too much. So Paul, yeah. I remember from last Superboot, you had a roadmap, you said analog, hybrid, and what's the third one? Digital. So we have three teams of people, and we started with this one, then onto the hybrid with Chris, and um, another team of people which you don't even know about but working on a digital synth right now which we're modeling in software so we actually have it running on a pc and uh, that will be our digital synth that we'd like to bring out in well i won't say when because <laughs> it's, it's too early but yeah yeah awesome cool so this here is the main outdoors area and if you keep just walking over there you get to one of the two tent areas of the event so I found Mr. Analog Kitchen over here with the coolest nickname ever, like for, you know, in the online space. Um, could you tell us, like, if you had to bring one synth to a desert island, what synth would it be and why? I think it was going to be my TG77 uh, Yamaha, uh, because I don't know jack shit about it. <laughs> and, um, I've had it for years and I'm still on the third editor trying to figure it out. So when I'm on this deserted island, probably there's no one there, uh, no electricity either. So I'll find a way to get that thing going. And once I get it going, then that would be my, uh, my uh, synthesizer, I guess. Now, before we take a little tour, a stroll through the woods, 
check out the tent area. We're going this way. Here we see the synth nerds in what is for them an unnatural habitat, out in the sun. But they do seem to enjoy this brief moment in sunlight, as opposed to their synth dungeons. So this is the gym area, where there's like multiple lanes of stands with all manner of Eurac, retro kits. We got Swedish Noise Lab over here. And I think we're gonna go check them out. So it's with particular pride that I'm checking out Noise Lab. It's the second time we're recording this because I forgot to hit the record button. I'm such a professional. But you are here showcasing some Swedish Eurac modules. And you got some new stuff. For yeah. example, the Sega Gator. Yeah, I showed a prototype last year, but now it's uh, finally in production. Yeah. Um, so you can basically take uh, audio into the unit and um, use pitch to control yeah, other yeah, modules. Yeah, extract the, uh, the fundamental from the instrument and convert it to uh, a control voltage to, uh, to control your VCO, for example. That's so awesome. I, I, I try to be provocative and bring a ukulele here. <laughs> okay, right, uh, But right. no one seems to play with ukulele here, so okay. Oh, that's weird? Yeah, that's weird, <laughs> isn't it? And then you have a sequencer. Yeah, uh, yeah that's uh, very, very fresh. We've been, I, I got a very, very close friend that's been helping me develop this one. Uh, got four CV outs, four gates out, uh, and um, uh, you, it, it contains a Euclidean, um, a pattern generator, and we got a few generator, and step uh, sequence, and got lo lots of different stuff inside here. And then you also have this uh, drum module, right? The yeah, 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 yeah. It's an analog uh, drum module. And this was actually when, when, when I started to work with uh, with the sequencer, I realized that I had to have something that I, you know, uh, could control with the gate. So yeah, why not make a a drum module. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Right, so that's Swedish Noise Lab for you all. Yep. Definitely should go and check them out. Yeah. And check out the new wave folder. Oh yeah, the Wrinkler. Yeah. The Mark yeah. II. Look who I found here. It's the bow. It's it's the bad gear. No, you're looking for the bad gear. No, I'm not, I'm I come in peace. It's not gonna be a bad gear episode, I assume. There's no booth, so <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work out, so yeah. Let's continue our little walk here into one of the two main tent areas. So still not a lot of people here today, it's still quite early. And uh, as the day progresses, it gets progressively more crowded. Now this is super boot for you. You're just walking like through the forest, there's a circuit tent, and then you meet a guy who makes a thing which I haven't seen before. It's quite a unique little thing. So let's have a look at it. So uh, this device is called the Octawave uh, from Data Noise. And it's a very small uh, pocket sized, uh, well, phone sized, uh, aided to eight uh, analog output interface. Uh, the outputs are DC coupled. So it means you can also output CV control voltage for your modular synthesizers. Um, it just takes re regular optical aided input. Yes, yeah, so you can connect it to any audio interface that has the yes. ADAT yeah. interface, yeah. And if you, for example, combine it with a RMB DT phase, yeah. uh, you will get uh, up to 32 uh, outputs, yeah. which can be also CV at the same time. Yeah, so it's a good way to also get CV out of your system. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So if you're, for example, working in VCD rack and you want to uh, output CV uh, to integrate your real modular setup, uh, you can do that totally. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for showing it. Okay, let's see, let's see here. There? Sign it, Bob. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. So now we're moving from this tent area into another tent area over there. Now, as it's getting a little later in the day, there's just a ton of people in this area here. And that's because you can get some amazing food right over there. Juan, Midlife Synthesis came all the way from Chile. Yes. How are you feeling uh, super boots so far? Oh, it's beautiful, man. Like, first of all, the weather is just beautiful. I thought it was going to be raining all day and it's just lovely. The, the people are so nice here. You know, synth people are amazing. I can't believe people actually create this stuff. It's just, it's an experience. So like I said earlier, at Superboot, you just run into people who make wild and like unusual stuff that you've never seen before. And you are from the company Metzon Factory. Hi, I'm Art. You make this beautiful little thing and- yes, exactly. 
you know, we are a brand new company from Armenia. Yeah, so it's basically you can take different formats here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. So this is for the little uh, alligator, alligator clips? Alligator clips, like the Soma stuff. The Soma stuff, yeah? You know, you have Bukla or Siad Lombard, Eurorec. Yeah, yeah, so CV? Yes, yeah, CV, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And you have also, you know, like uh, the Vocal Modular yeah, the Vocal Format Vocal Modular or format, Bastel yeah. Bastel Instrument. Sure. Yes, and you can switch on and off the lanes, you can go you know, connect the lanes together. Many, many different ways. Yeah, so if I, if I connect an alligator clip here, I can get it out then as yes. CV, for example. Or I can put uh, the banana, yeah. banana in there yeah. and I can get it out here? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's going both ways? Yes. Okay, that's really cool. And is it out now? Can people find yes. it online? Yes, you can find it online. Just uh, search us on Insta, Metson Factory. All right, so I am here with Fine Gear. And last year, you kind of just teased the product. The product didn't have any sound going on. And this year, you have working um, models for both this one and this one, right? So this year it's not only working models, they're on pre-order, so we are started production on both awesome. of them. This is uh, Dust Collector's younger brother from the Archive Effects uh, family. And it's also a collection of experimental effects, where we have a noise generator with a bandpass filter which is modulatable, also with a VCA which is modulatable, a crackle source, crackle generator which is uh, also modulate the density is also modulatable and the level we have a simple ring modulator an ms20 type of uh, vcf with the resonance cranked up a little higher than the original one and a tape delay which is also has speed modulation feedback modulation and panning modulation it has the it features the the Space Echoes preamp on the inputs. It also has a ping pong mode, as long as it's stereo. <laughs> and uh, it also has an insert on the back. So you can insert uh, other effects in the feedback loop. And they're all stereo. And we also have, like on all of the Archive Effects uh, products, we have two LFOs. This time they're digital for to allow us to have more uh, waveforms. And yeah, and then you can to to yeah, and then you can actually take them out here, and you can patch them to exactly. other things and modulate. Exactly. So it's like, it's a bit, it's not totally semi-modular, but it's like there is modularity there. Yes, you can patch so things you can together. do stuff, modulate right out. And of on the, the box. back, it's the same. Is it the same as the dirt matting bag? Yes, that you can patch things together as well. Yes, yes, and uh, also for the noise and the crackle, you have inputs <laughs> which get mixed with the, the, the generated noise or crackles, so they are presented as effects. Sure. And also USB for MIDI sync, like I said. Awesome. And you have uh, an output, an inverted output on the LFOs, and also speed and symmetry modulation. So symmetry or PWM. Or yeah, can we get a little sound demo, a little taste sure, of what it sure. sounds like? Let me show you the tape delay, which I think everyone is expecting to, to hear. You can also play and put your fingers and play with the delay. Well, just like on all of our effects, you can actually put your fingers. Yeah, inside exactly. And try to interact with the sound. Yeah, because on the on the dirt mag on the dust collector. Dust collector, you, collector yeah. I can, always confuse the name, but yeah, on the dust collector, you have the you can play with the the spring um, the spring, spring tank. and the phaser. Exactly, exactly. Now coming from that tent area, and we move over here you can see that that's the main building again and we can just walk this way here into the main building again where there's like a, this labyrinth of synths. Like in the middle of the road, there is a sake bar in a Villa Villa Kula house, like Pippa Long Stockings house. Yeah, that's super good for you. Right now I'm following a mysterious cuckoo through the catacombs of synths. All right, let's go. So walking along these corridors, you will find various rooms where there's even more gear and people testing it out. 
One device that I had a lot of fun with that super boot is this sequencer, I think it's called Relic, and it's quite interesting. Now the firmware is far from done, they have a lot of work to do, but it shows promise. Super boot is also like the Oh this my big god, oh, can, I, can I get an autograph? Can I get a <laughs> Okay, so I found somebody here who makes a really interesting little product. So my name is Mark, I'm from Sukofunk, as written here on the device, and I make the Beatmaker sketchbook. I started like two years ago um, with DIY kits and uh, so to solder them by them by yourself. Those were the kits with nice enclosures. I'm offering I'm not offering those kits anymore, but workshops. Two days workshops to solder the electronics, learn something about electronics, how the, the, the sketchbook works. And um, yeah, what kind of product day two is it? Building. It's, an, uh, it's a sample sequencer, so you can sample, it's divided into four parts. Sampling, sequencing, uh, arranging and playing live. You can sample via the microphone, the built-in uh, line in. Just grab one of those currently 19,200 19, samples that are on the SD card. 19,000? 19, 19,200. Okay, cool. We have, an, it's an, a metric sequencer, so you can put samples wherever you want to. Mm -hmm. You can adjust volume, panning, the pitch and the probability to be it played. Uh, it can be divided into sheets or patterns mm -hmm. and you can select some snippets, just some parts of it and play them live in the live mode. Who did you make this product for? Who, who, what's the target audience like? Okay, so in the beginning my target audience was um, like young people because uh, samples are part of the hip-hop music uh, culture but a lot of uh, youth people, young people, they don't have uh, enough money. So the idea was to give them uh, a device or an, an opportunity to build a device by themselves. Learn something about electronics, uh, fiddle around with music, foster some music skills and uh, just learn something and do not pay too much. All right, so I'm here with my buddy Ken from Ashen Sound Machines. They make the Hydrosynth and I thought we'd just catch up and see kind of what kind of improvements have been done to the Hydrosynth, what's going on with updates and kind of what's the roadmap looking forward. So um, roadmap looking forward is always cloudy because we like to kind of just work on things and if we feel like they're great then we put them out and that's what happened with 2.0. So uh, 2.0 was probably a little bit over a year's worth of work going into the uh, update and we have uh, some really great things in here. One of the main things that we did was uh, the voice menu here now has this voice mod. And what's really interesting about the voice mod is that per voice here, you can set up different offsets that are gonna allow you to treat each voice individually with modulation. And all of this is accessible in the mod matrix. So you can assign voice, for instance, if I wanted each voice to have a different analog feel voice, I could do that. Uh, I could even go in here. So now I have voice mod going to voice detune. I can go to analog feel. Now each voice would have a different amount of analog feel as I adjust it. So let me go ahead That's and... So basically uh, when you're playing a chord, you get like slightly varied tuning perhaps? For, exactly, for, exactly. No, yeah. So, so uh, to, to use it in a very kind of mundane way, but beautiful way, would be like a vintage synthesizer. You would have, you know, each voice would have variances in the filter, level of the oscillators, maybe panning, lots of different yeah. things can be offset. Well, you can do that here, but you can go much further than that. You can even use it for step sequencing. You can send it to, to large ranges of pitch. You can do uh, modulation amounts. I often like to do things like uh, maybe have a noise uh, LFO varying something, but then just use a little bit of voice mod in there to adjust that a little bit. So you get just tiny like touches of bleed and that sort of thing. So it's very beautiful. Uh, for instance, on here, I have a patch where all I'm using is no oscillators, just the filter self-oscillation. And then I have um, some very slight variations in the voice. 
So as you press it, each, each voice is gonna be slightly different on here and you get these beautiful variations. And because it's self-oscillation there, it's already gonna be slightly imperfect and, and slightly out of tune, that sort of thing. But then you enhance that a little bit with these voice mod aspects. Another really beautiful thing that we added in here is the ability to make everything just more dirty and more vintage sounding. Uh, you can now go into uh, your oscillators here. Actually, let me pull up an initialize patch for a second. And we've even improved our random functionality as well. So if I want a wavetable, for instance, all I have to do is press random and then wave list and it creates a new wavetable every time I do that. So anytime I press this, you're gonna see- You get a new random wavetable. A whole, wave table. A whole yeah. new random wavetable. And so with that, we've now added this bit redux, which allows us to reduce the fidelity of these oscillators. which gives your filter a lot more to chew on and, and have fun with. In addition to that, we've done the same thing in our LFO and our envelopes. You can now, let's say for instance, I want LFO3 to modulate the wave scan here. I just hold down the source and press the destination and I've made that mapping. So now I'm gonna increase this and I'll make it a unipolar LFO. So it's gonna scan all the way through this, this waveform here. Right? But what gets really interesting is when you slow this down and we go to the second page here, we have quantize. So now I can turn this down and you can drop it all the way down to three. But I like it in like 17 to 33 makes it very like crunchy, like a, like a old uh, 80s digital wavetable sound. And if you use a, a filter with that, let's give it just a little bit of, just setting a basic filter setting here, right? And I can um, adjust my envelope. So we'll drop the sustain down, we'll give it a little bit of attack, a little bit of decay here, and some release. And so, yeah, so we've got some. So this is very basic, right? But then when I go to that quantize, So now you can have your envelopes stepping through. This allows you to create really rhythmic, interesting sounds by using these steps because everything is still BPM syncable. You can still take your, your envelopes and every single stage in here can be synced to your clock. So when you do that, it's still synced even though it's quantized, so you get this rhythmic step that, that's moving through there. So that's pretty much the entirety of Superboot for you, but of course there's so many more rooms, so many more manufacturers, and if you go here, you will not be able to see everything in one go, and if you go, stay for like all three days if you can, because there's just so much to take in, and like the first day is usually very overwhelming. And just like last year's Superbooth, I hosted a fan meetup. So basically, I gathered a bunch of YouTube people, online, I don't know, influencers, whatever you want to call us, and I asked y'all to swing by and just say hello, and we had a really good time, super casual. So if you're going next year, make sure to make it to the meetup. It's a really good time. And I just wanted to end the video by saying thank you to everybody who met me at Superbooth. I really love hearing your stories, like why you're into synths and also kind of why you watch my channel, why you watch this weird Swedish dude uh, play around with synths. So thank you so much everyone who came and said hello and I, yeah, I hope you stick around and watch more videos here on the channel. See you later. Hi, it's a weird small thing. <laughs> Get it? Yeah! yeah! Super booth, baby! <laughs>